All right, uh, so the topic of today's video is uh, setting up your home uh, shop or your home, uh, you know, your work area in your garage and just uh, basic things that you should have either for tools, for cleaners, for uh, parts in stock in your garage that you should have if you're doing any sort of home mechanical work, whether it be uh, cars, motorcycles, small engines, whatever. Just things that you pretty much need to have if you're going to be anywhere near successful and at getting this stuff done properly. So we're going to start with uh, these plastic containers I've set out here. I usually have them stacked right here. Um, so in this first one here, we have cotter pins. And 99% uh, of the stuff I use this or cotter pins for are garden tractors. Uh, they're used for uh, linkages and other stuff that's not normally taken off. Um, for things like the deck uh, that people do take on and off, the sharpened blades and all that. Uh, there's R clips, uh, which you can see a couple of those here. There's a couple different types of these clips, but they're basically reusable cotter pins, and I really like these. But for things like linkages that just kind of stay on usually the whole life of the tractor, unless of course something bends or breaks, we have the cotter pins. So it's Good to have a couple different sizes of those because uh, you can take cotter pins off and reuse them, but they're pretty much useless and they're uh, almost guaranteed to break you know, after a little bit if you uh, don't replace them. Uh, next thing we have in here is fuses. These are the most common type of fuses uh, that I replace in what I do. Uh, so as you can see, there's different colors and different uh, colors actually uh, symbolize uh, different amperages of uh, how much the fuse will take before it actually blows. So, for instance, the white, the white or clear fuses are 25 amps. These ones happen to be uh, four or 15 amps. The blue ones are 15s. Orange ones are fives. Uh, red ones are tens, and the blue ones are. I already went through that. The blue ones are 15s. And if you're not sure about how many amps of fuses, look on top. It's kind of hard to see on this camera, but there's a little. Uh, uh, it'll be like molded into the plastic, a little number that'll tell you how many amps it'll take. Um, next thing in this box, these are actually broken fuses, so I can throw these away right now. Next thing we have in this box is O-rings. We have a couple different sizes. We have larger ones over here, medium ones over here, and then uh, a little bit smaller, and then we got some really small ones down there. Uh, O-rings I use a lot, okay? Um, Everything from carburetor seals to uh, fuel enrichers to just everything. All, many, many things. Doesn't matter what break or brand, make, bottle, whatever. It doesn't matter what year. Chances are it has O rings on it. And they do dry up. They do get old. Uh, when they do, they don't seal anymore. And do end up causing you a lot of issues. So when I see one that's uh, not pretty much near perfect, I'll just replace it, and uh, that way I know it's good, and then any other issues past that will not be caused by uh, blow-by past that seal. Um, O-rings are used for a ridiculous ton of stuff, so it's always good to have those on hand, especially in bulk, because with bulk things, when you buy it in large packs, as I do, um, because I go through a lot of it, um, it's a lot cheaper than going out and buying one individually. Uh, for instance, I uh, get these whole packs of uh, 300 pieces each for around 7-8 bucks. Whereas if I were just going to go out and buy uh, a single snap ring or a circlip or whatever you want to call it, uh, sometimes they charge you over a dollar each piece. So. If they charged you over a dollar each for these at your auto parts store, that'd be over $300 right there. Whereas, you can do the math. Uh, I get these boxes for about $7.50 each from a place that I, I go to a lot, a discount parts place, for like overstock surplus stuff. Um, so you do the math, and it's ridiculously a boatload cheaper. But anyways, uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything in this box. As long as we're already in this box, circlips. 
These are used uh, on a lot of things as well. I actually have to replace the circlip on that scooter over there. Uh, the kickstart assembly, the circlip on that is wearing out. So occasionally the kickstarter will slide inward and uh, push against uh, one of the uh, clutch pieces inside the engine and it starts uh, rubbing on there and making a clacking noise and it, it, if I don't replace it, it'll get worn out. So after I do this video, I'm going to probably pop a new one on there. Sir clips are also used a lot in, uh, here's a hydrostatic transmission right here. You got sir clips around all these parts to hold all the shafts and stuff in place uh, so they don't slide back and forth. Uh, there's, I mean, it's just always good to have them on hand so I can replace them when I need to. I don't have to, you know, think about, hey, am I going to the auto parts store? Am I really going to need to replace it? Is, is it really that worn out? You know, whatever. Don't even question it. If it's spent, if it's not uh, springy anymore, if it's whatever, uh, just replace it. I have them on hand, so I replace them when I need to. I mean, obviously, if they're perfectly good clips, I won't replace them. I don't need to, but if they're if they're getting worn down, then yeah, I'll pop a new one on there. These are like sir clips. So they're clips. They're a different type of clip. I don't use these as often, uh, but I do use them occasionally. Um, it's good to have these on hand too, because something uh, like these little ones here, it is really, really, really easy to lose these uh, if you're rebuilding a carburetor or something. It can fall in the dirt. It can fall in the grass, and uh, like eight times out of ten, you just won't find it again. So instead of having to uh, try to go to the auto parts store or the hardware store and finding the right size and guessing and hoping they have one, and maybe having to special order it and wait for parts. Just have them on hand in the box. Go and grab another one. Um, for the price I get them at, I'm not too concerned about it. And uh, saves a lot of hassle and headache. Also saves you the half hour of looking in the grass before you finally give up. Or find it. I do work on a lot of GY6 engines, which are the Chinese imported scooters. So here are parts specific for those carburetors. Um, got the float bowl and some other parts. Some of these parts are worn out. For instance, uh, these are bad roller bearings, and they've got a flat spot on them. But uh, I do keep these around. That's a worn out uh, gasket for the float bowl. I do keep these around to show customers and people uh, what worn out parts do look like and what to look for and stuff. Uh, I don't keep around just brand new parts because otherwise they won't know what it looks like when it gets old and what to look for and how it behaves and all that stuff. A visual representation is a lot better. So over my years of uh, rebuilding these scooters, I've accumulated quite a few parts. So I've got a bunch of jets and needles and seats and springs and all that stuff for these scooters. This is a uh, it's a used filter, and it would never be something I would put on a customer's uh, bike. It would just be something I would throw on my own in a pinch. Something like this is a new one, which is also the same thing as that. That's a new one. Um, that I put on a four-wheeler, but it actually had a leak in the crankcase, so I never actually got to run it. So it's technically not new, but it's really not used either. So um, these are uh, headlight assembly parts from an 81 Honda Spree. Or not a Spree, it's a Honda Express SR. These are parts that um, they're probably going to be pretty hard to find. And if I special order them, uh, it might cost me a little bit more than I want to spend on them. So I had to replace the whole headlight assembly on one, and I didn't need them for the, the replacements, so I kept them in the box here in case I ever do need them. These are extra parts from a Honda Spree uh, clutch and uh, clutch assembly. And then I got some uh, extra brushes for an electric motor. So just uh, miscellaneous parts. And if I ever did need a whole carburetor for a GY6 engine, I have one sitting up here. I'll rebuild the spare parts. This one I use uh, mostly just for testing. I can uh, take the carb off and pop another one on in five minutes. So if a carb is an issue, uh, we can confirm it 100% by putting a good one on and testing it. Then we have another uh, 25cc carb for smaller uh, weed whackers, chainsaws, things like that. Um, 
Anyway, next box of things you should always have on hand. Hose clamps. They have their obvious reasons. You have uh, your fuel line. You have your uh, vacuum lines. You have, you know, all your other uses for these clamps. There's a couple various sizes here. Um, I got this uh, box for, I think it was about five bucks. It had a whole bunch more in it. So, these aren't 100% uh, top-of-the-line hose clamps, but they do work great. I've never had any issues with leaking or anything else with these. So, why I pay a whole bunch of extra money for hose clamps that work just fine. So. And it's always good to have assorted sizes, because uh, sometimes the hardware store doesn't even carry hose clamps as small as you need them. From uh, a lot more carburetor work comes all these uh, extra parts from uh, that I didn't need after I rebuilt other carburetors. Uh, so we got some jets and mixture screws, seals, springs, seats, needles, washers, fuel inlet port, uh, fuel pump diaphragms, uh, butterfly screws, um, bowl uh, ends. And here's another clamp. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, if you uh, do rebuild a carburetor or something, or you uh, replace the carburetor, or you know, uh, you're gonna somebody's gonna junk an engine or something, these are all perfectly decent parts that will still work in a pinch. Um, so there's no point in throwing them away because you know, some of these jets are like six, eight bucks each. But, um, and if, if you go through a lot of these like I do, you replace a lot of carburetor parts and rebuild a lot of them for people, uh, that can really add up, and it can cost you more money, it can cost your customer more money, um, and, uh, it's just, just good to keep those parts. I mean, obviously, it's always better to put brand new parts in, but if it's something like a 20-year-old weed whacker that, you know... Like that, uh, that, uh, what was it? It was a tiller I had in here a couple weeks ago that he used only a couple times a year and he just wanted it running. He wasn't too concerned about making it absolutely mint condition perfect. So I did throw a couple used parts on there and it ran just fine. So no issue there. Um, but anyway, those are replacement parts that are generic for a lot of different makes, models, and brands that you should always have on hand. Obviously, uh, with Supplies should always have a good roll of paper towels, good for cleanups, good for laying out uh, and putting clean parts on so you don't get contaminants and stuff all over everything. Um, for instance, if I just uh, soak this starter gear uh, and clean it out or something, I wouldn't want to put it back on a dirty bench. I'd put a clean paper towel on the bench and then I'd put that piece on there uh, so there's nothing, no dirt or anything getting in there and preventing it from working properly. Then we have your brake parts cleaner, your carb cleaners, and your lubrication. Um, carburetor cleaners, uh, the thing about these is they, they work well for carburetors. Obviously, that's what they're designed for. But they do leave a sticky residue, or not sticky, They it's kind of like an oily residue behind. Um, so that's why they always say, flush it out really good with gas and all that stuff before you rebuild it and put it back on the uh, whatever it came off of. Um, brake parts cleaner does not do that. Brake parts cleaner is uh, designed to actually come off clean and dry. So I actually prefer brake parts cleaner for a lot of things, uh, but carburetor cleaner works just fine too. Uh, a little bit of spray lube goes a long way uh, in some situations. Uh, then of course you have your uh, your grease, uh, which is your the more like solid form of lube. Some grease here and then some uh, more grease here. Um, for things like uh, these Kickstarters on these scooters, uh, I just did one uh, the other week where it was all gunked up and old and dirty. and You push it down and it just wouldn't come back up. You'd have to push it back up with your foot and then push it back down and try to start it. And push it back up with your foot. And, you know, just pop the cover open. Spray it all out with some carb cleaner. Wipe it down with some towels. Put some grease on it and it worked like new. No problem there. Uh, hoses. I buy in bulk so I get it much cheaper. These are uh, actually specialized hoses for, uh, you know, really, really tiny stuff like these 25cc carbs. 
and then I gotta hoses that go all the way up to quarter inch and then I got other hoses elsewhere but I got a whole bucket of hoses here uh, so I can grab those in a pinch I don't even have to run down to the hardware store auto parts store or anything if I need a hose I can just have it right here on the bench get whatever I'm working on done and then get it back out the door so it saves me a, a lot of gas money in going back and forth and buying parts. It saves me a lot of time. It saves me a lot of hassle. Um, and it just gets everything done faster. A propane torch. This thing has been uh, has rescued my butt countless times, getting uh, stuck parts off. It's helped loosen things. It's helped clean things. I mean, uh, for if you're one of those people who would rather... Uh, clean things and reuse them rather than buy new ones. For instance, spark plugs. Uh, you can actually uh, they they if you do don't have your mixture properly, they can get a lot of carbon buildup. Or if you got a a used engine and you're rebuilding it or something, or cleaning it out and all that, it probably has a lot of carbon buildup. It's cheap enough to buy a new plug, but if you don't want to or you can't or you're in a a pinch, a propane torch can actually uh burn out all of that carbon buildup, spray it out with a little carb cleaner. And they work just fine. They work like new. There's no uh, arc prevention because of any of the crap in there. So, and then of course you got uh, your parts bins. Everybody should have parts bins for all your screws and electrical connectors and all your other miscellaneous little pieces in there. Um, then, uh, of course, you got your sealants, you got your gasket makers, you got your glues. Some of my glues and stuff are actually inside. I got my dielectric grease and stuff inside right now. Uh, we're bringing that back out in a little bit. I was using it for something uh, earlier today. Uh, should have a good flashlight. I got one here, one sitting down there. It's And actually one in my pocket, too. So it's good to see down in parts. And Helps get a little more light when you need it. You gotta need a good bowl. You can fill it up with uh, your cleaner and actually soak parts in it. Uh, I use this thing all the time. It uh, doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is just a, uh, I think it's like a, a tin bowl or something. I got for free. And I soak parts in it all the time. and Helps a lot. These are not anything right now, and these hoses are not anything right now. I'm using those for something else I'm building. Um, but work gloves, whether they be latex, vinyl, whatever, uh, if you're working with gasket makers, glues, paints, whatever, uh, put on some gloves. They take two seconds. Uh, they're super cheap. Uh, and it's well worth uh, the, that two seconds of preventative measure uh, rather than getting glue and paint and gasket sealers and makers and all that stuff all over your hands and everything else. So, it's good. I got grease all over my hands, but I don't have glue or epoxy on them, so that's good. Along with your, uh, supplies, you should, uh, always be well stocked with oils, whether it be, a uh, two-cycle, whether it be 30-weight, whether it be motorcycle oil, or anything in between. You should be well stocked with oil, so whatever comes in, you can uh, do your oil changes, you can do your flushes, uh, you can do whatever you need to right there, right then, without having to rush around and find parts and buy parts. And of course I got belt dressing and some other uh, supplies, like oil container polishes, all that type of stuff down there, sealants, brake pads, whatever. Um, if you do work on scooters or motorcycles, uh, four-wheelers, snowmobiles, that type of thing, it's always a good idea to have your own helmets. Um, just be safe about it. If something's not working right, that's even the more reason to wear a helmet. You know, if uh, the motorcycle is having an issue and you're test riding it, if something happens to go wrong on it, it's very easy to fall over or slip or... Maybe the wheel locks up and you lose control if you're not an experienced rider or something. Wear a helmet. Takes two seconds. Keeps your head warm. Uh, just, it's well worth it. I've gotten in 
my fair share of motorcycle and four wheeler and stuff accidents, and I am glad I have always worn a helmet. So then, uh, oops, it's a little loud. Um, a little bit of a uh, audio stimulation can help pass the time as you're doing mundane, repetitive tasks like carb cleaning. Uh, so here's a very fancy radio. It's a lot fancier than it needs to be, but uh, this thing is actually designed to pick up uh, shortwave transmissions and all that stuff. So when I am installing CB radios and trucks and stuff, I can actually use this to test them out. Um, it's, it's a lot more than necessary. I could always just uh, use the other CB sitting on that shelf there, but this helps a lot. Um, yeah, here degreaser and uh, obviously whenever you're done you want to clean up I apologize for the mess right now I've been I got that truck about a week ago and I'm on a mad rush to go through everything on it so I've been doing more fixing than cleaning um, there's a that back reflector for it but very very important to safety as well um, this uh, fire extinguisher sign actually came from a Ford plant in Detroit, I believe it was. Um, so I just put that above the fire extinguisher. Um, so if I do have a fire, if something happens, uh, for some reason something sparks and ignites some fumes or something, I'm not totally screwed. I can grab the extinguisher and put it out. Uh, this is an ABC extinguisher, which means it's good for trash, wood, paper, liquids, and electrical equipment, which is perfect for everything I do in here. And you always want to make sure the needle's in the green mark so you're safe and it's full. Um, and I've got uh, first aid stuff and stuff elsewhere. But anyways, uh, you want to have a good uh, multi-tester. It's good for a lot of electrical work. Test all your switches and circuits and continuity and resistance and all that type of stuff. Um, you want to have a good set of wrenches, wrenches and sockets, 95% of the work I do, uh, is wrenches and sockets. So this is a very nice craftsman set. You don't need it to be this fancy, uh, but you just need something that works. That's not made of cheap materials. That's not going to strip out. I also recommend picking up one of these. It's a uh, magnetic pickup tool on an extension. Uh, I've saved more than one engine rebuild by being able to reach down there and pick up a bolt or something in the engine that's been dropped. Uh, so that's very, very helpful. Along with your sockets, of course you will need a good set of tools, which includes your, uh, your pliers and your tin snips, your mallets, your drivers, your cutters, and... Just all the generic stuff you would need, all your ratchets and all that. I do have specialized tools. I do have uh, gear pullers, harmonic balancer pullers, all that type of fancy stuff, uh, just because I do all that. But the average home mechanic will probably not need all that. In your work area, you want to have everything easily accessible. I have three brushes here, steel, brass, and nylon. Uh, the reason for three different uh, materials. A is because you want to use the one appropriate for the job. You don't want to be scratching paint or scratching metal or anything else like that, but you still want it to be stiff enough to clean the area. Um, so make sure you use the right brush. We have scissors, channel locks, uh, adjustable wrench. It's a Stanley, so it's not technically a crescent wrench. We have uh, spark plugs for testing purposes. Uh, we have our feeler gauges, also known as leaf gauges, which are good for valves, which are good for... Uh, you know, PTO, uh, electronic PTO, uh, gapping and valve gapping. You can even use them for spark plug gapping. I use this thing for spark plug gapping. It's a spark plug gapping tool. We have our, uh, besides the torch, we have our lighter for heat shrink tubing and all that type of stuff. We have a valve stem tool for uh, replacing valve stems and rethreading them and stuff. We have spark plug sockets with uh, rubber grommets inside of them so they can grab the plug as we pull it out so we don't drop them in the engine bay any anything. Uh, we have duct tape. We have um, forceps. 
These are very, very helpful, so you can actually hold on to things without uh, worrying about dropping them. These are good for installing Eclipse or things like that, um, or working in tight spaces. Tiny little flathead for uh, getting at the jets on carburetors and stuff. Then, of course, we have a, a round file, which is good for sharpening chainsaw blades and just generally deburring things. Um, good set of uh, screwdrivers. We have a smaller Phillips, a larger Phillips, and then four flatheads with different sizes and lengths. We have our circlip pliers because, of course, we can't really do much with circlips unless we have the proper tools for them. They have these uh, tiny little points for grabbing inside the little rings and expanding them. I can also flip this on the other side so when I pinch it, it will uh, contract. Um, then uh, you need an impact driver. This is uh, Chicago Electric. That's like 50 bucks at Harbor Freight. It's ridiculously amazing. It's much better than a lot of the air tools I've used. Um, extra vice, you don't really need that. Angle grinder. It's a very, very helpful thing. Everybody needs one of those. Uh, right now there's a grinding bit on it. But I also do have my cutting bits, I do have my wire wheels, and I do have a paint removal bit for uh, paint and rust and that type of stuff, just general cleaning of, of the surface. Um, that's a fuel filter for a 96 Mustang GT, that was the one that I replaced out of my car. Um, so that's, obviously you're not going to have that hanging in your shop. Um, I do a lot of uh, bicycle and motorbike work too, as you can probably see on my channel, so I have a bunch of extra chain links uh, so I can replace sections, replace chains, whatever. Um, and uh, of course you got, I'm not going to show you everything in there, but you can kind of see, you got a box of electrical connectors. Uh, very good when rewiring or doing electrical work along with electrical tape. And uh, I think uh, that's basically about it. Good pair of work gloves is good, uh, so you don't burn your hands or something if you're working with a hot engine. Um, I got a security camera up there, so nobody can steal my stuff. Um, but I think that's about it. Uh, that's basically just all the generic general things that uh, any home mechanic should basically have inside their garage or inside their shop or something, uh, because those are the things that I use most often with the things that I do, and I fix everything from trucks to weed whackers. So, um, I hope this has been helpful for you or given you some ideas of things that you may want to uh, get for your for your shop, um, or maybe some things that you're missing out on or trying to set up one for your own. I don't know, but uh, one more thing, Marvel's Mystery Oil. Uh, do your research on it. I'm not going to do a big, long spiel on it, but it's amazing stuff. Everybody should have it. But there you go. That's uh, my garage and how I have it and how it works best.